Over the past five years, really good things have happened in Deep Bay on Bowen Island. The community's taken on some big issues, derelict boats, seafloor garbage, problem moorage. But because I've been busy with other things, I just haven't been involved in these really good efforts. But what got me to jump in was the arrival of the Sea Change folks with their talk of restoring eelgrass in the bay. I live on Bowen Island, a place the Skohomish peoples know as Nuklalakam, just to the northwest of the great city of Vancouver. The ferry to the island arrives at the village of Snug Cove. The big bay just north of Snug Cove is known to the Skohomish peoples as Quilakam, which I understand to mean Clam Bay. Settlers named it Deep Bay, and in the 1970s it was renamed on nautical charts as Mannion Bay. Mannion Bay is accessible at two popular beaches from the causeway that separates the bay from the lagoon and from plenty of anchored boats in many waterfront homes. For years I've been snorkeling the shallow waters of Mannion Bay and I've seen firsthand what damage is done by the anchor chains of mooring buoys and boat anchors to the seafloor. Boats are pushed around by tide and wind, dragging their chains across the bottom, scouring it clean. Any eelgrass beds in the way are destroyed, which is really hard for me to accept. Eelgrass is critical habitat for a myriad of marine life. Crabs, fish, juvenile salmon, thick meadows of this seagrass provide shelter from predators and the eelgrass blades are covered with an algal coating that's fed upon by tiny invertebrates that are in turn food for many small fish and animals. So the health of Mannion Bay is closely tied to the health of its eelgrass. It's August 2019 and today is a big day. I've just heard that a team from the Sea Change Marine Conservation Society is here in Mannion Bay today. So I'm heading out to meet them. They have an eelgrass restoration project underway in Howe Sound and they're here to check whether Deep Bay is a good bet for eelgrass restoration. And any help for our eelgrass beds would be really exciting news. I spot their research boat and head that way. Their survey work is underway, but they welcome me aboard. The Sea Change team is inspecting a part of the bay that's lost its eelgrass due to boat anchor damage, but now is a potential candidate for replanting because a waterfront owner is willing to change his boat anchor system to one that's eelgrass friendly. Jamie's at the helm and he points out to me that the eelgrass only grows in shallow waters to a depth of about 7 meters. Outside, Justin's handling the underwater camera that's attached to an airplane-like rig. They tow it under the boat and it allows them to view the seafloor. Inside, Sarah handles the line on the camera while watching the bottom pass by, passing on her observations to Fiona, who's taking the notes. Fiona tells me that there are ways to moor boats without damaging eelgrass. There's a few ideas for more gray designs, um, replacing the chain with rope, having a mid-anchor float, um, all with the intent so that you're, you're lifting that chain off of the seafloor so that it's not scouring. Another way is to anchor in water deeper than the eelgrass zone, which means deeper than 7 meters. Encouraged by what the team sees through the camera, Jamie and Justin the divers don scuba gear to take a detailed look at the bottom. After half an hour, the divers report back that the bottom looks good. So the team decides that they'll be back in 2020 to transplant eelgrass to the site. I am just thrilled. So I get a chance to talk to Nikki, who leads the Sea Change team. Because a few years ago, I think it was in 2013, when we mapped eelgrass for the Islands Trust, we kind of, at least in my mind, left Mannion Bay as a kind of a sacrificial bay. There were so many derelict vessels on the shore, on, on the water, so many boats, 
anchored gotcha. here. So much use of this area that the eelgrass was being adversely affected and we couldn't see how that was going to change. So coming back in just a few years time and finding that the municipality has stepped up, that the community has stepped up and have made all these improvements is really heartening for us as restorationists. Leaving the crew, I am so heartened by this commitment to plant eelgrass. I like the psychology of environmental restoration work. It's proactive. In a world where we spend so much of our time just trying to hang on to the natural world that we've got, the prospect of improving things by giving nature a hand is so energizing. And here we are a year later. It's September 2020, the air is smoke-filled from wildfires down in Oregon, and the Sea Change crew is back in Deep Bay. Fiona has gathered a group of Bowen volunteers on Pebbly Beach at the head of Deep Bay to prepare eelgrass for transplanting. The dive team has harvested some eelgrass shoots for transplanting from healthy eelgrass beds nearby. We're in the middle of the COVID pandemic, so we're all wearing masks and keeping our distance. Nikki, who leads the Sea Change group, explains how the eelgrass shoots need to be prepared. Then, we all get to it. The eelgrass shoots are attached to metal weights, bundled into groups of 10, and then they're ready so for planting. These are not oh, we're doing fine. Bruce is a great leader. <laughs> Later that afternoon, I paddle out to where the divers will do the planting. I'm going to snorkel with them as they work. By the time I arrive, they're just finishing up. I watch them plant one of the last of the eelgrass bunches. The eelgrass has been planted over an area of about 20 meters by 10 meters. Eelgrass spread through their rhizome roots, and so the hope is that with time, this patch will fill in and spread out across the bay. Right beside the eelgrass garden is the new eelgrass friendly boat anchor that I've heard so much about. It was installed by the Sea Change crew for the nearby waterfront owner. I'm intrigued. Two midwater floats suspend the thick nylon mooring line well off the seafloor. What a refreshing difference from the chain system that drags across the seafloor, ripping out eelgrass and everything else. I'm curious about this new anchor system, so as the divers get back on board, I get in my kayak and head over to talk to them about it. Justin tells me that because anchor chains drag across the hard sand, they wear out in just a few years. The nylon rope and float system, on the other hand, is just as strong as chain, but longer lasting because the rope is kept off the bottom. And of course, the big benefit is that there's no harm to nearby eelgrass. Bedrock. So a day later, I'm itching to get back and see how the little transplant bed is doing. I swim over and take a look. I'm delighted to see a small school of shiner perch in among the new eelgrass. And heartened that several crabs have also taken up residence. <laughs> this is terrific. The restoration's already paying dividends. Several months later, I'm back to the eelgrass patch, but this time with Barry Pinn, the eelgrass's waterfront neighbor. The new eelgrass-friendly anchor system installed by Sea Change is attached to Barry's mooring buoy and he's been monitoring the eelgrass patch with an underwater camera. Barry has the camera attached to a wire rack that supports it on the bottom. The camera is connected by electrical wire to a small monitor where he can watch and record what's going on below. Well, I'm gonna zoom in and just, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Isn't that cool? And that looks really healthy. <laughs> On the screen, we watch a flatfish, with its eyes swiveling, scoot off, amid a school of perch. And then, a crab shows up. Well, <laughs> it really looks 
like things are busy down there in the eelgrass. So I leave Barry and paddle off, pretty darn hopeful. I really like where this is all heading. We've got a new patch of eelgrass and nature's moving in. And this effort to help eelgrass thrive in Manion Bay is pulling together a lot of good people. The community's getting behind this. So where to from here? I think the big vision is to build a culture of care and attention for all of the marine life in Manion Bay. I know that the municipality now has a provincial license for the entire bay to manage both moorage and the bay's ecological integrity. This is so good. I've heard too that there's an initiative to create a voluntary no anchor zone over the eelgrass areas. I like that idea. I think most people would go for keeping moorages out of shallower water, given that most boats are moored in waters deeper than where eelgrass grows anyways. And after that, who knows? As long as we have the community behind it, I think we can figure it out as we go.